Okay, so I've seen episode two of the Fallout show, The Target. It revolves around The Target, who turns out to be a scientist. And the prior episode makes him seem like he's this central figure within the Fallout lore. But in the end, he is the definition of a MacGuffin. A character who himself isn't important, but he does important things because they set the plot in motion going forward. Overall, I like the episode. I think it's better than the first one from start to finish. There's no sections that drag on for too long. There's a couple of scenes that are intended to be comedic, but they're not that great. Really the standout scenes for me, of course, is the shootout and actually the, the scene with the knight after he encounters the bear and Maximus domes it. Just the knight's bravado disappearing and his honest assessment of the Brotherhood of Steel, the missions that they sent him on. Up to that point, he's been quite a dick, and he's still a dick, even to the end. But I like how he's just straight with Maximus. In a way, that relationship is reflected between the target, Wilzig, and Lucy. So they encounter each other two times in the episode. Both times, Wilzig tells Lucy that she's not suited for survival on the surface, and he tells her to go back to the vault. But at the end, in the climactic scene, he tells her that He's believed in her all along, but he does remind her that she needs to live like a surface dweller and not like a vault dweller. So one question that I have is like, in those earlier two encounters, is he telling the truth or is he trying to apply some kind of reverse psychology to get Lucy to come out of her shell and adapt? And of course, the real emotional weight of that final scene is that he tells Lucy that she can change the future by transporting his soon-to-be decapitated head to Maldaver, who happens to be the woman who's leading the gang that's taken Lucy's father hostage. One line that stands out to me is the shopkeeper, Ma June, and she tells Lucy that the vaults are nothing more than refuge for rich folks while the rest of the world burned. In my prior video, I mentioned the tension between social classes and the prologue and then when the bombs start to drop the dad of the party leads his family into his vault he even punches out the visiting dad saying there's not enough room i like how there's exploration not too deep but just exploration of the inherent conflict between the haves and the have-nots a couple of other things um so Will Zig, the target, a.k.a. Mr. MacGuffin. In the beginning of the episode, we see him taking a dog that's supposed to be killed at birth because it's just under 10 ounces, but he fudges the record and he takes it with him. And I'm kind of unsure about why he does it. But from what I can tell, his purpose, his intent, is twofold. One is to make it seem like he's doing some kind of experiment on that specific dog separate from the other dogs. And the other reason why he's training up this dog, from what I can tell, is to make it serve as his eventual companion because he plans to escape all along and rendezvous with Maldaver. Again, I don't play the games, but I've since learned that some of the games at least have a canine companion and its name is Dog Meat. I always thought Dog Meat was like a resource, a consumable within the, the Fallout universe. And it seems like it's a featured character. I've seen posters of it. And I like how the ghoul saves it and actually adopts it toward the end of the episode. I like that touch of humanity that's still evident in the ghoul character. The old Cooper is still existing. Really nice climax. Props to Ramin Dejwadi. He's the composer for the series. He's done work for other movies and shows, even video games. He composed the score for the 2010 Medal of Honor game. He's probably best known for the Game of Thrones theme song. Um, great job, just the swell of music. And then it leads into a licensed song by a group called The Inkblots. Yeah, good episode. We see the characters showing who they are. The ghoul is very calculating. He's 
just sitting there outside the shop inside the Philly junkyard town. We see his skill with guns in a shootout, his willingness to just do whatever it takes, shooting the target in the lower leg, and that ends up being a fatal wound. Maximus is very idealistic. Right after he dons the suit, he assumes the role of honorable protector. I'm pretty sure that as the show continues, that idealistic view is going to deteriorate. But for now, we see his willingness to step in and do what he believes is the right thing, even if it turns out to be not the best thing. And he does save Lucy and stall the ghoul long enough for her to escape with uh, Wilzig. The shopkeeper, Majun, who has that memorable line about the vaults, she's the one who reveals that her client is Moldaver and she's made an arrangement to meet up with Will Zig. And then for the Lucy, the incentive is that by escorting Will Zig, she's able to transport the substance that he's injected into his, his neck. It's her chance to finally meet the woman who's taken her father. On my second viewing, I've noticed some things I hadn't noticed before. Early in the episode, Will Zig, when he's walking through the corridor with the pup, we see a gurney being wheeled around, and there's a figure underneath a sheet. It's clearly the corpse of something. On my first viewing, I thought it was the gloved hand of one of the researchers, but now that I think about it, it's supposed to be the clawed arm, forearm of some mutant that's being developed in the complex and I understand it's an enemy in the games. The other thing is that toward the end Lucy and Wilzig rest up by this satellite it looks like and the camera shows the marking CCP so that implies that it's an old Soviet satellite. That's interesting because I had initially thought that the two opposing forces leading to the nuclear Armageddon had been the U.S. and the Soviet Union, but according to the follow games, it's actually the U.S. and China. Just something simple like the wide-angle shot showing Lucy's um, campfire at night, just to illustrate how visible it is from a distance and how easy it would be for someone, anybody, to locate her, and that's what Wilzig does. The show has been picked up for a second season. I've learned that the director of these two first two episodes is Jonathan Nolan, the younger brother of Christopher Nolan. And the brothers Nolan have co-written two good Batman movies. Nolan is also involved with the Westworld show. I've never seen it, but I know the first season is well regarded, but the later ones are not so much. So hopefully Fallout doesn't follow the same trajectory as that show.